This is the first 5.3 video where we're going to look at conditional probabilities and independence. First, we're going to calculate and interpret what a conditional probability is. So conditional probability is the probability that one event happens given that another event is already known to have happened. And it is expressed with this notation right here, the probability of B given that A has occurred. <clears throat> so this bar is read as given that, or you could say under the condition that A has already occurred. So let's take a look at an example of some conditional probabilities. In 1912, the luxury liner Titanic on its first voyage across the Atlantic struck an iceberg and sank. Some passengers got off the ship in lifeboats, but many died. Suppose we randomly select one of the adult passengers from the Titanic and define the following events as F, randomly selecting a first class passenger, S is randomly selecting a passenger that survived, and T is randomly selecting a third class passenger. So part A asks, asks us, what's the probability that we randomly select a third class passenger given that we know they've survived and interpret this probability? So we're, we're looking at only the people who meet the condition of surviving. So we're only going to look at this row right here. When we're, when we're working with a two-way table, conditional probabilities will always be restricted to um, a row or a set of rows, it could be, or a column or, or a set of columns. So of those who survived, 151 were in third class out of 442. So now we're not using the total table because we know that they have survived. So to interpret this, given that a randomly chosen passenger survived, there's about a 34.2% chance that she or he was in was a third class passenger. So now we're going to look at part B where we flipped T and S. So this is going to be a different probability and it's going to be read differently. Now it's the probability of the person surviving given that they were a third class passenger and interpret the value in this context. So now we're only looking at those who were third class passengers. So we're only looking at this column here. So of those people in that column, there were 151 out of 627 who survived. So given that a randomly selected passenger was in third class, there was about a 24.1% chance he or she survived. So the last one is <clears throat> gonna include more than one column or possibly row. Given that the chosen person is not, in, is not a first class passenger, what's the probability he or she survived? Write your answer as a probability, uh, as a probability statement using the correct symbols for the event. So they wanna know what's the probability that they survived given that they are not in first class. So using the events that they've given to us, this would be the probability of S given not F. So here we're going to be looking at all of the non-first class passengers. So the non-first class passengers would be second class or third class. So I'm looking at these two columns and I want to know of these two columns, what's the probability that it survived? So the survivors in second class, there were 94 and there were 51 in third, 151 in third. So I'll add these together divided by the total, which would be 261 plus 627 for a probability of 0.276. So there's about a 27.6% chance that the person survived if we knew they were not in first class. So when we're using a two-way table, it's a lot easier to calculate conditional probabilities because you know you're gonna be restricted to looking at a specific row or a specific column or a set of rows or columns. But we won't always be calculating conditional probabilities from a two-way table. And so when we're not, we're going to use this specific formula for conditional probabilities. And this is the probability of A given that B has occurred. So to calculate it, all you have to do is the probability of A and B, both
both occurring divided by the probability of B occurring. So let's take a look at an example we've done in a previous video. A survey of all residents in a large apartment complex reveals that 68% use Facebook, 28% use Instagram, and 25% use both. Suppose we select a resident at random. Given that the person uses Facebook, what's the probability that he or she uses Instagram? So this is what I'm looking for. The probability they use Instagram given that they use Facebook. So I need to write out the probability of them using both divided by the probability of the second, which is Facebook. So you're always going to be dividing by whatever statement is given. Given B, you divide by B. Given F, you divide by F. But if you switched, if it was the probability of B given A, then you'd be obviously dividing by A instead of B. So whichever one is given is what you divide by. So the probability of them using both Instagram and Facebook was 25%. The probability of them using just Facebook was, or the probability of them using Facebook is 68. So the probability of them using Instagram, given that they use Facebook is 0.368. And that's just using the conditional probability formula. The whole reason we wanna use or we talk about conditional probabilities is for the purpose of seeing if two events are independent or if they are not independent. Um, not independent is the same thing as them being dependent. For some reason in statistics, we wanna say not independent. Um, so whenever we're writing out our answer, we are gonna say that they are not independent or they um, are independent. Events are independent if knowing whether or not one event has occurred does not change the probability that the other event will happen. In other words, the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A given that B has not occurred. Or it's equal to just the probability of A occurring without incorporating um, whether B has occurred or not. Without actually defining events here, it may not make that much sense. Let's do an example using um, a table that we've seen before to talk about how two events could be independent or not independent. So they wanna know if there's a relationship between gender or handedness. To find out, uh, we used Census at Schools random data selector to choose a simple random sample of 100 Australian high school students who completed a survey. The two-way table summarizes the relationship between gender and dominant hand for these students. Suppose we choose one of the students at, in the sample at random. Are the events male and left-handed independent? Justify your answer. So first I've written out what my events are. I've said M is randomly selecting a male student and L is randomly selecting a left-handed student. And these two events are going to be independent if the probability of me selecting a left-handed person is the same whether I know they're a male or whether they're not a male. So the probability of them being left-handed given that they're male, if it's equal, we don't know if it is yet, if it's equal to the probability of them being left-handed given that they're not a male. So what's the probability that they are left-handed given that they're a male? So I'm only looking at the males, seven out of 46 are left-handed. What's the probability that they are left-handed given that they are not a male? So if they're not a male, from this table, it means they're female. So three out of 54 are left-handed. So you can see that the probability of them being left-handed given that they're male is 15.2. The probability of them being left-handed given that they're not male is 5.6. So these events are not equal, which means they are not independent. So since they're not equal, it means that uh, knowing that they're a male increases the probability that they're left-handed. If they're not a male, there's only a 5.6. If they are a male, there's a 15.2. So knowing the outcome of their gender helps us predict the outcome of their handedness. So since these probabilities are not equal, the events male and left-handed are not independent. Knowing a student is male increases the probability that the student is left-handed. Uh, if you're looking at this 
formula here, you, you hopefully, hopefully have noticed that you could also check to see if this was equal to just the probability of A. So in this case, we could compare this or this to just the probability of them being left-handed. So what is the probability of them being left-handed here? There are 10 out of 100 total. So there is a 10% chance that they're left-handed, which you'll notice is also not equal to this one or this one. So that, that could be another way that you could show that these two events are not independent.